my name's Nicole and I'm here with Dr. Chaplick and we're going to be talking about melasma today and melasma is something that I have struggled with over the years and Dr. Chaplick has helped me with a lot. It's been a process um, and I'm going to turn it over to you. So, you know, tell me, um, tell me basically what melasma is and what factors make it worse, make it better. Well, so yeah, um, melasma is a very frustrating condition because in general it's chronic, meaning once you get it, um, it tends to get better or get worse, but it doesn't really go away, unfortunately. It, it tends to get worse in the summertime, and um, we never really knew why we thought it was definitely sun, but then we had patients and studies where patients were out of the sun entirely and or were protecting themselves sufficiently every hour reapplying sunblocks but still getting breakthrough melasma and so we had come to learn that melasma is multifactorial it can also be caused by heat um, there are different types of melasma there's um, telangiectatic melasma or melasma that has a little bit of a red tinge to it and so as our understanding of melasma improves so does our treatment but at the end it's still very frustrating and um, as i can clearly see um, even being in this field for, for 20 years now, I still can't perfect it. We've gotten really good at treating it, yeah. and there's a lot of little tips and tricks that we've developed simply because we live together, and um, we're able to fine tune and tweak things and get it to- Free guinea pig. <laughs> to get it to a very good manageable level, but still at the end of the day, it's something that I want to convey to all the viewers in that it still work. It still requires maintenance, and um, it definitely gets better and worse, but don't give up on it because we've definitely improved our understanding of it and also our treatment of it. Oh yeah, drastically to the point that I feel comfortable, you know, walking in around your own skin. in my own skin, not having to, you know, I've worked in dermatology for 12 years and I, you know, I, I've, I feel kind of like a hypocrite, you know, not being comfortable in my own skin. And it's nice to be able to just, you know, roll out to the grocery store and not have to put, you know, a couple layers of makeup on to try to even out and hide the pigment. So I, I'd say we've just about got it there. Um, and it's like you said, it's a matter of maintenance and not giving up and, you know, not, you know, I'm just staying with that routine. So um, you did mention that heat is a factor and a lot of people that do struggle with melasma and that even I see in clinic um, will come in and say, well, you know, I've, I've been wearing my sunblocks. I have a white brim hat. You know, I'm, I'm staying out of the sun. Why is it that my skin is still lighting up? And I think it's really important that you did mention that. that it could be heat, it could be temperature, ambient temperature, and even believe it or not, sometimes cooking or being too close to window glass that type of stuff cell phone use may worsen melasma it's a possibility yeah. uh, it hasn't been proven or disproven quite yet uh, with statistically significant studies but i think it may be a factor as well what about indoor lighting it hasn't been proven yet right um but you know we can't avoid indoor lighting and so what we have to do really is to understand it more work around it and come up with um, tools and tricks to kind of improve it. So one trick that I don't know if a lot of viewers know about is the fact that some blocks are better than others. Uh, in fact, I think the physical blocks like titanium and or zinc work better to protect against the sun because some of the sunscreens reflect some, but they don't really uh, shield it. And I think the, the blocks do. Um, secondly, wait, I've got to cut you off there so, because we are sitting right by a window and I like to use this as an example. We've got an example of sun screen that lets the light through versus that wall behind you, which is the physical block. So I, I'm glad that you said that because I really want to focus on that. I think people kind of need the visual of the screen letting, still letting some of the light through, but the block is broad spectrum. Regardless, there's still heat and things like that, but some of the things in physical blockers are um, iron oxide it works really well so tinted sunblocks tend to be better for melasma than standard sunblocks oh, why is that there's an ingredient in them yeah. that helps shield the sun a little bit more and also helps with the heat okay. and so tinted sunblocks tend to be a little bit better um, it's a hard sell for some people because well, it's, you have melasma. well it's a tone match too so you have to really find the right sunblock that matches your tone that doesn't make it look funny or orange but there are a lot of them out there and then um you know you can certainly like our matte rx which yeah, is the right. universal pigment matching technology right our, our um, sunblock is particularly good for that it shields really well but it also is a good um tint and, and it's a good and it matches um complexions really well that i've come to find but what's so, the most important thing about that sunblock 
the zinc concentration. The zinc concentration is very high. Good luck finding it anywhere else. It's about 19 percent. Yeah, but um, more importantly is the fact that there are tips and tricks to kind of help you manage the melasma. It doesn't have to be our sunblock, but right. keep in mind that the ingredients in the sunblock are very important. Zinc or titanium is very important, together with the fact that the iron oxide is a tint that helps with melasma in general. Mm -hmm. So that's a little trick that um, I don't know too many viewers know about. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I even just learned something new there as well with the added benefit of the tinted sunblock, which is very appealing to me, especially when my melasma is more apparent. Yeah, and also I think that uh, regardless of the condition, a lot of patients tend to use sunblock and then they'll use makeup over it or they'll use a moisturizer and then they'll put makeup over it. But I like to make things simple and try to find a product that has all those things in one. So if there's a moisturizing sunblock with tint, that's your best bet because then you're not putting multiple products on, you're not spending more money, and you're not necessarily clogging pores with things that may or may not be high, um, communogenic. So trying to find one product that does three things is ideal yeah. in a sense, and it's also ideal for the treatment of certain conditions, one of which is melasma. Absolutely. Do you have any other tips, any procedures that you would recommend? Um, um, so, so in my experience, and the, the melasma has gone a long way in full circle with treatments there, you know, we started with chemical peels, which are very effective for melasma, but like anything else, um, it can sometimes make melasma worse and it can sometimes just put it in remission melasma tends to come back. So chemical, chemical peels are a good way to decrease the pigment and kind of induce a series of treatments. Um, there's lasers that may or may not work. The pico laser is now something that's being used very frequently for melasma. Okay. Um, and some patients or people or doctors even like to use IPL. In my experience, I don't recommend any type of laser for melasma because I think that the heat that it produces can worsen it. Now there's some devices and procedures that do not cause necessarily heat that don't worsen melasma, but I wouldn't personally recommend any form of light-based therapy to treat melasma myself. I prefer chemical peels, I prefer hydroquinones, and I prefer sometimes microneedling will help break up the pigment. And um, I've personally attested to that, yeah. Well, so in my experience, I think that a form of hydroquinone-based um, therapy and or treatment is essential in melasma. Yeah. And it's something that we have to use prior to any kind of procedure sometimes and then after as well. Now, there has been a lot of negativity by hydroquinone. The FDA tried to pull hydroquinone off all the physician's shelves, but it was definitely pulled off the OTC market, and it's for a reason. And it's that if hydroquinone is overused and it's used for a period of time, um, it can cause a permanent discoloration of the skin called okinosis. Endogenous okinosis. And so I've seen those cases a lot. And once it happens, it's very difficult to impossible to treat. And so for that reason, it's very important to go to a board certified dermatologist or and or a core aesthetics provider that understands that just giving out hydroquinone and helping somebody for a month isn't enough. Sometimes you have to explain to the patient, monitor the patient, and keep things in check because sometimes if it's not done correctly, it can cause a problem as well. I don't want to scare patients or people, but keep in mind that hydroquinone is very effective, still in my experience, the most effective product for melasma, but has to be done correctly. Um, and when I say that, that means that it can also be started at a low dose and increased up to 20 to 25% hydroquinone, which is doable in some recalcitrant cases of melasma. But it really has to be done with somebody who knows what they're doing in this aspect because that high of a concentration of hydroquinone in the wrong person can also cause a problem. Understood. So anyway. What do you what do you have to say? I don't mean to cut no, you okay, off, but um, what do you have to say as far as like the over-the-counter strength hydroquinone? You know? I think it's effective for certain patients. It's a two percent typically. Uh, one product is called Ambi that I see a lot patients come in with. But there's also some concoctions that not just have hydroquinone, they have cortisone. And I've seen some patients come in, particularly uh, patients from uh, patients from Africa, Somalia they'll somehow get products that not just have hydroquinone, they'll have clobetasol in them. Clobetasol is a very powerful corticosteroid, class one corticosteroid. And it will not just whiten the skin, but also thin it. And so I've seen some disastrous um, results from that. And I've seen some permanent exogenous okinosis as well. So I understand the market. I understand why patients want to bleach their skin or look lighter. And in certain, um, certain areas of the world, it's more desirable to be lighter than darker. 
but there's also problems with it. And so I think that whether you read it online or somebody blogs about it or it's the FDA, we all have to understand that this has to be done correctly. Right. I agree. So seek a board certified dermatologist. I think when it relates to your skin and melasma, that's wise. Um, and it's not just hydroquinone, so let me elaborate. We also use chemical peels, glycolic acid, it's very good for this sometimes, but if it's done too strongly, it can burn the skin and cause worsening of melasma. So again, comes with a warning. And also I like um, salicylic acid peels as well for melasma, sometimes even TCA in the right patients. Okay. So chemical peels are a good way to kind of decrease the pigment, but then I also have a maintenance regimen um, involving glycolic acid topically and also maybe retin-A topically, and or throwing in some hydroquinone periodically, particularly in the summertime when it tends to worsen. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. And it sounds like it's um, it's really about balance too. And you know, what works for one person might not work for another. So it just sounds, I wanna emphasize that it sounds like it's a process um, and it's between the, the patient, you, and your dermatologist um, to, to find what works for you. And you know, you're not just gonna be put on something and necessarily, you know, be, be better overnight, you, you work towards that um, by figuring out. Correct, one size is not fit all. There's different types of melasma. Sometimes patients come in and they think they have white spots everywhere, but in reality, that's their skin and they have dark spots everywhere. Right. So they have to be kind of informed that you actually have melasma and not white spots. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some recalcitrant melasma. There is some melasma that no matter which dermatologist, plastic surgeon, or anyone that you go to is very challenging to treat. Even, mm -hmm. even doctors who specialize in this condition have trouble sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, learning from them and from other doctors who are um, experts in this field, there's a product that I like to use both topically and sometimes by mouth called um, TXA or transexamic acid. Um, medically, given IV, it's used to stop bleeding, but we've come to learn that even in pill form, it can decrease melasma quickly, yes. meaning like in a week it can make melasma go away, but it's not for everybody. And I really reserve it for occasions where I can't, no matter what I do, improve melasma. And um, I'll, I'll definitely prescribe it and it definitely works. Um, but it's not the first thing to go to, like I mentioned, and you kind of caught on to, there's a process that I'd like to try first, including bursts of hydroquinone, maintenance therapy, sometimes peels, before I give somebody something internal, because it does have some side effects, including blood clotting. Um, and then kind of to segue off of that, so what we do is we take the IV form of the molas or the transexamic acid, and we use it topically. So it's a sterile solution, comes in a sterile vial, and whatever procedure that we do, I will occasionally put it on top. So sometimes with microneedling mm -hmm. and or some of the uh, CO2 lasers and even the Morpheus procedures that I'll perform, which cause micro channels in the skin, it allows for the transexamic acid to get in a little bit better and kind of absorb and seep down and help mm -hmm. break up the pigment as well and keep it that way. And so, the are awesome. <laughs> it's a, thank you. <laughs> it's just a, another kind of tool that we have in our toolbox that we didn't have before. And so, what I want to convey to the viewer is that despite the fact that it's so frustrating and it's so chronic, that doesn't mean that it's there forever. So we're developing technologies, we're using old technologies, and we're constantly trying to work on something to kind of make it so that it's more manageable. And it can be very frustrating for patients who do everything right, who follow all doctor's instructions and show up to every single visit and follow everything to a T. They put on their block, they use the iron oxide blocks, the tinted blocks, they do the hydroquinones, they do the maintenance therapy, and they still get a breakthrough. Well, so we can help with that. And so we can actually even plan ahead. So we know which certain times of year makes melasma worse. We know some conditions that make melasma worse. So we give you ahead of the game. We don't have to wait for it to get worse. Sometimes we can just have a patient come in in summer, start a series of peels, maybe do a little microneedling, throw some topical TXA on it, and kind of put it at rest before it becomes a bigger problem. So, um, so what you're saying is that basically we don't have to constantly be on the defense with melasma, defending against the sun or defending against heat. We can be on the offense and be ready for it. It's like anything else. The more you know, the yes. more empowered you are. And so the more we're studying and tweaking it, the more information we have and the better we all feel about it. Yeah. And the more we can 
know, convey that to the patient and give that patient that benefit too. So, exactly. Yep, that's the truth right there. You, you heard it here first. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing your extensive knowledge of melasma and um, skincare regarding melasma. And is there anything else that you want to say to our viewers? No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. I like the interview style format. Great. So, yeah. And I hope to do some more of these with you. All right. Thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you.